Welcome to Tutorial on Twine. In this video, I'm going to cover reviewing JavaScript as part of Sugarcube 2.36. So Sugarcube defines itself in reference to another web language, JavaScript. This is the web language we use when we create web pages and other interactive elements using HTML and working with web browsers. So we can better understand Sugarcube as something sitting on top of JavaScript by first understanding JavaScript itself. So when we're working within Twine, we have the ability to add extra JavaScript. And this is under right here, story and then JavaScript right here. So if I click on this, you'll notice that I have already added so right here some JavaScript code. So let's talk a little bit about how this code works and that will help us get to know the functionality provided by Sugarcube that we'll look at in future videos. So let's start with something fairly simple. Whenever we want to save data within JavaScript, we create a variable. The naming of variables follows some rules established many decades ago in which JavaScript inherits from other existing languages. And these are, when we name variable, it must have letters, numbers, or the underscore it cannot have special symbols and it cannot have spaces. Often we will name things, and this is an example right here in this line, but it's sometimes called camel case right here, where it goes up and down, kind of like the hump on a camel. And so because we don't have spaces, sometimes we will name things with a capital letter following the word if there are more than two words within a name. So for this line right here, I am creating a variable. So starting in 2015 and moving forward in the JavaScript web language, we create variables in multiple ways, but a primary way that we often see is with the keyword let. Keyword let creates a variable or tells JavaScript to create a variable. And here we are assigning it the number 10. In fact, if you used other macros within Twine, especially working within Harlow, you're used to this process. This process you may have seen when using macros within Harlow, you might have seen something like set, something to something. And this follows this exact pattern, except it's in JavaScript. So it's let, that is create a variable, variable, and instead of the word to from Harlow, we have equal number 10, and then we're ending with a semicolon. So this says create a variable name example and set it to the number value 10. Now this example right here is a little more complex. JavaScript allows the creation of a programming concept named objects. Objects allow us to associate a number of values together as part of a collection. And this becomes incredibly powerful with creating more complex data structures within JavaScript. So this says right here, Create a variable, same thing again, create a variable. This time create an object. Anytime we see opening and closing curly braces within JavaScript, we're creating or working with an object. So this gives it something called a property. So whenever we describe one of the values within an object, it's called a property. So this is an object and it has a single property called some property. Now notice when we describe a property inside of an object, instead of the equal sign, it uses right here the colon. Now this example right here has two different properties, and notice there's a comma between them. When we're working with objects, we can name multiple properties. Now moving down into this line right here, we see a slightly different concept, and this is called a function. JavaScript is based on other existing languages that came before it. And one of the common concepts we find within programming is our need to break up complex processes into smaller parts. A function allows us to define a small task or process or set of instructions that we can define as a smaller subset of a larger program. We call it a function. And in this case, we use the word function in JavaScript to define a function. And so this allows us to define something that will do something. Now there are multiple parts of functions, but I won't really get into it as part of this video, other than to say this right here, open and closing parentheses, allow us to send data in, and this line right here with the word return allows us to get data back out. So we can think of functions as smaller subsets of larger programs. And we will often find, and the reason why I'm reviewing it as part of this video, 
that when we work with functionality, functions within SugarCube, we're actually working with functions defined as part of SugarCube that we can then use. When we use a function, we use the phrase calling the function. And this dates back many, many years as part of programming history and is mentioned in lots of different programming languages. All that means is we are using a function somehow. We use the phrase calling the function. In fact, you see an example of it right here. So I'm calling a function right here that is part of an object right here. Anytime we see a period between two different words, generally two different things, then we are accessing some part of some object. Pretty commonly, we will access what's called a method. Anytime you hear the word method as it applies to programming, it just means we've put a function inside of an object. And we see an example of that down here. So this is another object right here. It has a single property right there, and it has a method, which is just simply a function inside of the object itself. Now, the reason why we might want to put functions inside of objects is it allows us to better organize things. So, for example, if we have a group of different processes that all do slightly different things, perhaps generate random numbers, for example. Maybe we want to generate a random number 1 to 10, or 1 to 20 or 1 to 30, or 1 to 100. We could define each of those processes that produce some information, a function, and then put them all inside of a collection, an object. So that allows us to better organize things. And often we'll find, when we're working with JavaScript within SugarCube, we're accessing a particular object and then its corresponding functions, which of course we call methods. We also sometimes access its properties, although this is a little rare within SugarCube itself. So we are reviewing JavaScript as part of this video because much of the stuff we use within SugarCube is, again, JavaScript. SugarCube is built on JavaScript. We are always using JavaScript to some degree as we work with more complex functionality and macros within SugarCube. Thanks for watching.